Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics One-Dimensional Geometry video. In this video, I'll be going over the basics of constructing a one-dimensional linear fish space from the chromatic scale, as well as musical and mathematical operations on this linear fish space. Okay, so to start off, visualize the full chromatic scale, or all the notes, on an infinite piano. You can think of all the notes as having differing degrees of similarity and difference with one another. The interval groups that are by far the most similar out of any of these are the octaves. Now imagine winding that keyboard into a single helix or spiral, with each of the same note at different octaves in the same location on each rotation of the spiral. Then collapse that helix down into a single circle. All we're left with now is a circle with the chromatic notes of one octave. It looks just like a clock face, but instead of numbers, we have note letters. But in fact, we can make this even more abstract by replacing the note letters once again with numbers. We'll start at C at 0, so C sharp is 1, D is 2, and so on, until we get to B, which is 11. These numbers are called pitch classes. We call this clock face the one-dimensional pitch class circle. Since we reduce the chromatic scale to a single octave, we now consider notes that are octave multiples apart as being part of the same equivalence class. In other words, the entire chromatic universe, or the infinite piano, is partitioned into 12 groups of notes that are, under the relation defined in one-dimensional linear pitch space, equivalent. The set of these 11 equivalence classes forms a quotient space. So after all this, we've significantly simplified an infinite number of notes and octaves into a single set of numbers from 0 to 11. We can think of this one-dimensional linear pitch space mathematically in terms of modular arithmetic. This quotient space is a mod 12 space, which means that note operations and intervals are measured in terms of a modulus of 12. You will never have a pitch class that is greater than 11, because if you go all the way around the circle, you'll be back at 0, which is in the same equivalence class as 12 in all integer multiples of 12. This pitch class circle is pretty cool in a couple of ways. It allows us to visu visualize musical operations geometrically instead of just abstract. For example, consider transposition. Transposition, in music, means to move all the notes in a given group of notes up or down in pitch by a constant number of semitones. For example, consider a C major triad in terms of its constituent pitch class sets. It can be represented as 0, 4, and 7. Now say we want to transpose that C major triad to E major. Well, E is a 4 on the pitch class circle, so we know that the 0 has to become a 4, which we achieve by adding 4 half steps. So we add 4 to everything in the C major triad to obtain an E major triad. So the 0, 4, 7 becomes 4, 8, and 11. So what does this have to do with the pitch class circle? Well, first, let's plot the C major triad. It looks something like this. Now, let's transpose it to an E major triad. We can do this by just rotating all our points in the circle clockwise by four notches on the circle, or counterclockwise eight. So all the transpositions of a given collection of notes can be obtained by rotating these points around the circle. In other words, transposition corresponds to rotation, which is pretty cool.
Another musical operation we can represent in the pitch class circle is inversion. Now normally, when musicians think of inversions, they think of changing the bass notes and chords, but that's not quite the case in this space. Here we can invert a pitch class set by reflecting all the pitches across a predefined axis on the circle. That might sound a little complicated, but it's really not. So we have, once again, a C major triad, and we want to invert it across this axis of inversion between 3 and 9. We simply reflect each of the notes over the line. So here, the 0 reflects to 6, 4 reflects to 2, and 7 reflects to 11. Any note that starts on the axis of inversion just stays where it is throughout the process. So, whereas we started off with a C major triad, we ended up with a B minor triad. Inversion corresponds to reflection. Additionally, any time you invert a major triad, you'll get a minor triad, which is pretty interesting. There are other types of operations on the circle, but transposition and inversion are the two most prominent. There are several types of symmetry corresponding to these operations as well. If you can transpose or rotate a chord fewer than 12 notches on the pitch class circle and end up with the same thing you started with, we call this transpositional symmetry. For example, the C-sharp diminished seventh chord has transpositional symmetry because every time you rotate it three notes, you end up with the C-sharp diminished seventh chord. If you can invert or reflect a chord across an axis and its inversion is the same thing as you started with, we say the chord has inversional symmetry around that axis. For example, if you invert the A minor minor 7th chord across a 2-8 axis, it produces an A minor minor 7th chord. So we say the A minor minor 7th chord has inversional symmetry around the 2-8 axis. That's all for this video. To see the next video in the Musomathics series or visit centerofmath.org, click right on the blackboard. Thank you for watching.